uh, 77 London uh, subway bombing. Has anyone watched that one? I confess I watched it. But yeah, he puts out just enough stuff out there, you know, about, well, all these weird coincidences happened on that same day. It couldn't have been what? Yeah, it couldn't have been a coincidence. It was an inside job. And by the way, it's the same kind of strategy used with loose change. How many of you are familiar with loose change? Uh, that's the two hour, now they have, a, what I think it's called loose change redux. It's like an updated version of it. It's the one that contends that 9-11 was a what? Yeah, 9-11 was an inside job. Now granted, in the internet age, it's a lot easier to get access to this kind of stuff because if you know what you're looking for, it's easy enough to find it. And guess what? If you get enough popularity like Alex Jones does, you get to make plenty of money, not just buying, you know, not just selling your stuff on your website, but take a guess what you've also got. Uh, yeah, you've got ad revenues. I still wonder why David Icke hasn't gotten as far into it. I mean, you know what I'm talking about, right? Yeah, he's the lizard people conspiracy guy. <laughs> Dave, you, you heard of it? You know, yeah, the lizard people run, you know, run the country, that kind of thing, and Zuckerberg's one of the lizard people. You, 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 you've seen the spoof videos on Zuckerberg, I hope, right? Saw a Good. About it. Yeah, what's that? Saw a meme about it. Yeah, yes. Yeah, what is it? Humans drink water from time to time. He goes. <laughs> That's so nice. Yeah. yeah, I swear he's a lizard. <clears throat> but anyway. But yeah, McChesney argues that it's likely to get worse before it gets better. Now, any questions about the interview? Every time I give an assignment like this, even if I've seen the video five or six times, guess what I do? I view it again and take fresh notes again. Any questions about any of the things that he talked about in the interview? Most of the things that he talked about Guess where they show up? Textbook. Yeah, they show up in our textbook, either in some form in chapter 11 or in some form in chapter 12. Now, one of the first things he talks about is what were the promises of the internet age? How was it supposed to change everything for the better? How was it supposed to have changed everything for the better when it came to things like news and information? Yeah, it would be a new, unmediated, democratic forum where anybody could post information up there and you could get a hold of that information if you wanted to. And plus, we could even engage in a what? Conversation about it. How could we do this? Well, you go online and you engage in conversations with people. And supposedly, this is, you know, this is the kind of thing that would ideally make democracy work even better. Because then you could hear the opinions of people whose point of view are different from yours, engage in conversations with them, perhaps you could enlighten one another, perhaps learn to think, see things a little bit differently, maybe change your viewpoints for a more educated ma manner. But guess what? He says all of these beautiful, you know, the, you know, the thousand flowers that were supposed to bloom, they didn't bloom at all. Instead, front and center, and this is one of the first things he talks about. This is also one of the first things talked about in chapter 12 on new media. Privacy's become a total joke at this point. Why? Because you are, you are potentially being tracked all of the time in ways that George Orwell couldn't have imagined in 1984. And my not so funny joke that I keep repeating is that uh, the people who control the internet know more about me than I know about me. Because all of my search habits are on there, the things I like to buy are on there, you know, so on and so forth. Yeah, they know more than my therapist knows about me, if you want to get technical about it. 
But yeah, privacy is in effect gone. And because of this problem about privacy, this might actually even stifle what? It may have the reverse effect of stifling conversation. I watch where I go on the net. The same way in the 1980s, I watched what kind of books I took out of the library. Just in case Big Brother was what? Yeah, because Big Brother is watching you. Now we actually know that Big Brother is watching you. So this might be one of those things that leads people to, well, maybe I won't search for more information on that. I don't want to be on one of those lists. You know, that kind of thing. You might also decide not to get involved in certain kinds of conversations. And this is, this is kind of an early internet example. Millersville University is not far, this is not in the book, it's funny though, but it's going to make my point. There was a young woman who had finished up her student teaching in elementary ed. By the way, this is the case of the drunken pirate, by the way. But what she had done, I guess, at a sorority party, was they took a bunch of pictures, of course they posted them on the internet. Millersville refused to give her her degree and certification, even though she had fulfilled all the requirements, because she had demonstrated poor character because of these pictures. There was no evidence that she was even drunk. It was just designed to be a what? A funny little caption, drunken pirate, because the marauder, a pirate, is their, is their mascot. So she was here at a party, you know, just with a, what was it, a, a, what are those red cups? Red solo, a red solo cup, you know, that kind of thing. I don't know what ended up happening, but it went into litigation. So in, in a sense, th and this is like 15 years old, your potential employers might be going back into your Facebook archives to see the kind of things that you have been posting about. And all these things could potentially be what? Because you've made it public. Because you have made it public. <clears throat> all those things could technically be what? <laughs> yeah, they can be used against you. So this is one of the reasons why you know, everybody's encouraged to have a social media presence. But watch what you say. This is one of the reasons why I pretty much don't do what? I don't do any of this crap. I mean, I mostly have a social media account so I can instant, instant message my daughter and my wife. That's really about it at this point. Because I understand Dr. Ski is watching you. <laughs> now, I'm not that paranoid there. But you know, the idea is, you know, uh, you know, management could be looking at the kind of things I'm doing. And let's say I, I, let's say I post some political opinion uh, that might be controversial or something. I could get a call from hum human resources or something. Hey, you know, you, you made this homophobic statement. I would never do that, by the way. But yeah, let's, let's say I were a person who would make a statement like that. That statement could be what? That statement could be used against you. So it's kind of unsurprising that, you know, with the with the diminishing privacy on the internet, that it might actually stifle actual conversation. And by the way, half the people you might meet on, a, on one of these sites anyway, not meet, but you know, communicate with on one of these discussion threads is probably a what anyway? Probably a paid troll of some sort anyway. Just trying to get, you, you know, a bedwetting libtards fired up, you know, that kind of thing. Yeah, make it, okay, bedwetting liberal, piss your pants now. I'm going to piss you off and call you an idiot or whatever. I found that also to be a what? Oh, that's a time suck, folks. Because it's not going to do what anyway. It's not legitimate political conversation. I'm not going to learn anything from it. I just might need blood pressure men, you know, that kind of thing. So, yeah, a lot of what going, you know, doesn't really help the conversation anyway. Now, any, uh, any questions from the gallery? He also talked, to, how many of you knows how he talked about loneliness? Remember that conversation? 
when we're supposedly more connected than ever, it's actually led to what? Disconnect. And I caught myself doing this. Because I get peopled out on a daily basis, no offense, I actually don't even want to talk to anybody when I'm walking to the parking or walking to my car. So guess what? I, I use my phone as a prop. How many of you do this sometimes? I pretend like I'm talking on the phone. It would probably be more effective not to pretend that I'm talking. Probably be more effective just to do this, right? <laughs> just to pretend like I'm typing or something like this. But yeah, people are actually becoming less comfortable in real life interactions. Less comfortable in real life interactions. Because these other kind of interactions are what? They're easier in a sense. And we also become addicted to them. We also become addicted to them. McChesney doesn't talk about this, but there's plenty of neuropsychological studies about the effects that our devices are actually having on our brains. Perhaps actually making the old way of doing things even more difficult. Because when you get that notification, endorphins, when you get that notification, yeah, there's the person I've been flirting with online, bing! And you, know, you get the endorphins show up. Oh, I just made that one up. Anyway. Questions, or is it too early? Now, in my notes, I do have that statement about that the internet didn't create this problems, it merely accelerated them, so I don't need to talk about that again. Now, Peter asked him about the, uh, his hypothesis for improving the system. And how, many of you, how many of you need help with that hypothesis? He says, there's a way we could improve upon what we've got. Now, in other books that he's written about, he and John Nichols pr praised the BBC model of doing things. <laughs> How's the BBC model work? And then we'll talk about his new version. If you, have, if you have questions about this Friday, make sure you have them Friday so I can answer them because I don't want to leave anyone in the dark or blind on the assignment. The BBC is taxpayer what? Funded. Yeah, it's taxpayer funded. And when I say independently operated, I mean independent of what? Government. Yeah, independent of government. And if I can give you a couple of examples, and I'll admit this, I do like what the BBC does. You can get BBC World News. How many of you watch it on PBS sometimes? When they call it BBC World News, it actually is what? It is actually World News. Much of what we get from our corporate outlets that is called world news isn't actual world news. It is vaguely world news as it relates to the U.S. of A. In other words, our version of world news is typically a lot more watered down and a lot more nationalistically based. But when the BBC calls it world news, it actually is world news. Now, a couple of points to note is Many people say, well, it's funded by the government, therefore it would speak the government line. Well, no, it's kept <clears throat> independent. And by the way, the BBC was one of their hardest hitting news outlets in the, night, uh, or rather in the early 2000s when then um, Prime Minister Tony Blair jumped on board with whom? George W. Bush and the invasion of Iraq. The BBC was, was not basically bowing down, oh, Prime Minister Blair, you're wonderful. They didn't genuflect to Blair like a state-run media would do. As a matter of fact, they were highly critical of Tony Blair. In the 1990s, when Tony Blair first rose to power, the BBC was also what? Highly critical of Tony Blair and his questionable business dealings. The special privileges he gave to British Petroleum, BP, they actually, they actually, some of the commentators even started calling it Blair Petroleum. 
because of his overlooking environmental regulations in their favor, giving them sweetheart deals and things of this nature. So the BBC, those are a couple of cases. The BBC was actually does tend to be highly, you know, you know they do the job that the media is supposed to do. The media is supposed to speak what? Truth? Yeah, supposed to speak truth to power. And that's in effect what the BBC ends up doing far more effectively than what? Than our corporate media does. Now I'll give you a couple cases in point. Now my wife's step stepdad is far right wing. He basically thinks if you're a Democrat, you're basically either a nincompoop or a, or a communist or whatever. Yeah, we have interesting conversations. I'm no fan of the Dems or the Republicans, by the way. I just, I call the Dems Republican light, by the way, <laughs> uh, for the most part. <clears throat> but anyway, yeah, I always, I'm one of those people who votes the evil of two lessers. Not because I'm really on board with either of the political parties, I actually vote against the other party is how it works for me. Now that's a sad state of affairs, folks. I think that's the way it works in most democratic societies for most people, though. Yeah. I only vote Labour because I hate, I hate the Tories, you know, that's the line in, Brit in Britain by some people. <clears throat> oh yeah, but anyway, he would always harp on how the mass media basically is a, a, the Oba Obama propaganda network. I'm like, oh, I kind of watched the news media and they were actually highly critical of Obama. When he first came to office though, they gave him what kind of predictable treatment? The celebrity treatment, because politicians are in effect what? Celebrities. And by the way, he was new and different at the time. For I don't think I have to say why. He was indeed new and different at the time. So it's unsurprising that with the kind of celebrity coverage that we tend to get with our corporate media system anyway, that many of our politicians in fact do get the celebrity treatment. Now that doesn't mean what? That doesn't mean an endorsement or anything like that. That just means that this celebrity news kind of stuff, what? It's cheap and easy to do. And a lot of people like that crap, right? I want to know about the Obama family and their, you know, I want to know about their dogs and children and whatnot, even though what? Not really necessary. Like yeah. I mean, that's like treating them like a royal family. Or I want to know about the Bush daughters and so forth. No, you shouldn't care about these people at all. As a matter of fact, caring about their lives might be half the problem. Because what's relevant? What they do, how, you know, what they do when they're in office is what's relevant. You know, not, not learning about their family lives as if it were reality television. You know what I'm talking about? It's really not relevant, but nonetheless, that's the kind of coverage that's what? Cheap, easy, and you like that kind of crap. Is that pretty good? You have a question, I can tell. I was just gonna say, I mean, I feel like it, it doesn't matter to the extent that we make it matter, but I think some of it is important because I do think that it reflects on their character. Oh, their yeah. Morality, morals. Um, yeah. It can, but perhaps not to the extent that we give it that kind of coverage. Right. I mean, like half of the things that like Trump has said that have just been like really uncomfortable oh. to have been like not politically related at all. But like now that he is in office, that's used against him because it, or that, or the locker room talk. Like, does it really have effect on? Yeah, like, grab him by the you know what. Yeah, it's not. Yeah. It doesn't relate to office, but that reflects on him, yeah. his character, and like people should care about what kind of characters and. Yeah. Well, I guess I guess I should have been clear. Uh, that stuff does matter, but I'm talking about like what private school Baron is going to. Oh, yeah. You know, that's the kind of stuff that ultimately does not matter. Uh, in the long run, things like this do reflect on what? On character, and character issues actually do matter to people. And I would argue that they what? <clears throat> they probably should matter to people. And you wouldn't have tried to cover it up 
if you didn't think these kind of things mattered to people, particularly if who is a large number of your base that you're trying to huckster? Yeah, or I was going to say, and died in the wool evangelical Christians who think you ought to be stoned for committing adultery. We'll go Old Testament on you, right? Thou shalt not commit adultery. And of course, he's the adultery king. I think, is, is that pretty fair? Love him or hate him. You know, he's, he's, he's an adultery kind of guy. He objectifies women and so forth. And he, he likes to grab them wherever he wants to grab them. Oh, by the way, Mad Magazine did a really funny bit recently. It's called Making America Greet Again. It's a spoof on what greeting cards written by Donald Trump would look like. When I read them to my wife, she actually thought they were things that he could have actually said in many cases. His Valentine card was the funniest, I'll just tell you that. The Valentine's card was the funniest one. Uh, it references the you know, grabbing them kind of thing. Yeah, anyway. Well, it's, it's a lot grosser than that, but you could have imagined him saying that. Have you ever seen, I forget what the show was on, but like, there was a skit where there was like an Obama in person, and he's actually really good, but he was like quoting things that Donald Trump actually said, but like when it's said in the way that like how Obama spoke, you're just like, it sounds so like, what? Like, yeah. Yeah. Now I want to hear it. Uh, if you have any questions, oh, good luck. Oh, with whatever it is. It's best. Oh, definitely good luck. <laughs> if you have any questions for writing that paper, bring them next time. If you you're kind of putting things off and you didn't really give the interview an off.